So maybe um, just as much a reminder as anything, um, elevators can be anywhere and they can be in residences. So there are many applications where uh, larger, older homes are retrofitted to allow for aging in place and the incorporation of an elevator into the building um, is a great advantage. Um, in, in this case, we have an elevator that's been installed that doesn't look anything like an elevator. Um, there are a few specific elevator manufacturers who just focus on this idea of residential and light usage elevators um, for these kind of retrofit applications. We also have um, accessibility issues on the exterior buildings in some older retrofits of commercial buildings where we have stairways and have not um, anticipated other kinds of accessibility because of the age of the building. Um, so this is a common um, um, uh, porch lift, um, wheelchair lift. Um, can be seen in residences. We'll see this in commercial projects uh, also. Um, typically, we wouldn't design a new building to need these kind of pieces of equipment. These are to make older buildings uh, more usable and to fit with current codes. And this is a great uh, drawing here, I think, that shows you how you would illustrate these types of installations, how you would need to communicate. So this is a document that would be used to be incorporated into your, in one form or another, into your construction documents as you would be called to do a retrofit application for one of these types of lifts. There's, so lifts don't stop there. There are uh, dumb waiters. Dumb waiters are lifts that aren't for people, but for moving um, merchandise and purchases. They can be available inside of residences. They were very popular in the past, um, but this could be a solution for moving things. Uh, for, also for people who have uh, disabilities and are trying to make their um, facilities uh, more friendly to aging in place. And then briefly, I want to touch on escalators. We're going to install an escalator in our lab project, so we'll get a little bit of a um, another um, experience with uh, what its requirements are. Um, they're obviously um, quite expensive and large undertakings. Um, they're limited with the, usually with the amount of floors that they service. They have a capacity issue with them as far as the amount of um, uh, speed that you can move between floors, um, but they have additional capacity in the number of people that can be carried with them. So there are this idea of calculating how much, um, how many people you can move per period of time with these devices when we're talking about um, floor to floor transfer of people as compared for uh, um, when we're making decisions about escalators as compared to elevators. Um, and escalators, um, another world of, you know, Schindler is also, I believe, a manufacturer of escalators. And um, they come in many varieties. They are usually the feature elements in um, malls and other, um, you know, few multi-story rise um, commercial buildings. And here we have one that actually is uh, running in a spiral or a, a curve form. So they, they are... Uh, technologically very advanced devices. Um, and we're going to just take a cursory look at their um, the, the footprint that's required of them and the kind of, you know, the, the pit that's required below them, what happens up at the top, uh, basically in our BIM modeling environment. Um, they also have another advantage over elevators as far as they create both um, a certain level of accessibility, uh, but remember they're not accessible for wheelchairs. So Wherever we have these kind of installations, um, we're trying to m move the majority of the population via the escalator, but we still need to have um, elevator systems also um, to deal with accessibility. Um, but they also can function as stairs when they're not working. So in the event of power failure or other kinds of failure within a facility, escalators can still um, uh, perform a form of egress from the building because they still are functional. Um, and that's an important consideration. And um, I'm, I'm really not comfortable delineating whether that is an acceptable form of egress in all conditions of all buildings. So that you would have to consult the code on, on whether a escalator that isn't running is actually a form of stairway egress from a building. 
So that kind of wraps up our, our overview of vertical transportation. And um, we'll look at the real physical placement of these things within a multi-story building in our lab.